I want to jump into atrial fibrillation, something that a lot of people may or may not know about this. It's almost when your heart is out of sync and it's not working well. Um, think of it as almost, almost like a seizure of your heart for, for the audience yep. to understand. Typically, you have two beats going on, atrium, ventricle, and they work together in a very synchronous way. I describe it as two umbrellas that are hooked together by their handles. The top umbrella is the atrium. atria and the bottom are the ventricles. Normally, they beat in a one-to-one -one partnership, and that's what we call normal sinus rhythm. When you're watching a television show and you see the little blips going blip, 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 you're seeing one, two, one, two, one, two. Atrial fibrillation, the number one cause of atrial fibrillation, David? Hypertension. Stress. Well, we could talk about stress raising the high blood pressure, but that's why we try and keep your life as low stress as possible. We need you forever. <laughs> if it is possible. But the top umbrella starts to shake, or fibrillate is the term. Now, instead of going one, two, three, sixty times a minute, it could be shaking at three, four, five hundred times a minute. The hallmark that one of your viewers might notice is that they check their pulse in their wrist or their neck, rather than feeling bum bum, bum bum, bum bum, a regular pattern. All of a sudden, they feel. Bump, ba -da -ba. It's like tap dancing. It tends to be faster, though not always, but it's irregular. Typically, as soon as you develop this, you become at risk of a stroke. If you're in atrial fibrillation for longer than 48 hours, you're at risk of developing a clot in the heart that could break off and travel up to the brain. The typical person who develops this type of problem is somebody who's diabetic, hypertensive, smoking, overweight, doesn't exercise. Once you need these anticoagulants, these blood thinners, most people would go on a drug called Coumadin, otherwise known as Warfarin. We now have a host of new drugs that your viewers will see advertised routinely. Uh, some of these drugs like Eliquis and Pradaxa and Xeralto, these are all new medicines that do not require monitoring. The reason why they're going on this anticoagulation is because they can form a blood clot in the heart With and the that blood clot can go to the, to, the, to the brain and cause a stroke. So Thank that's you. why you give them blood thinning. But there's a problem with blood thinning medications, right? Yes. The big problem with blood thinning medication, although it works very well in most people, is that there are a number of people who cannot take blood thinners. Either they are bleeding from their intestinal tract, uh, they are at high risk of falling, they have Parkinson's or end-stage arthritis, or they're elderly and unstable. There are a variety of different reasons why people cannot take blood thinners. Ultimately, the problem is that they lead to bleeding. And as a result, believe it or not, about 50% of people who should be on a blood thinner to protect themselves against a stroke in atrial fibrillation are not on a blood thinner. So, there are now ways of closing the part of the heart where the clots form. The clots form in an area of the heart called the appendage. Much like you and I have an appendix in our stomach, we also have an appendix in our heart. And there's a device called the Watchman, where they take a small umbrella-like device, I think your viewers can see it right now, and they position it in a part of the heart, this appendix of the heart, where the clots form. Over a period of a couple of weeks, this area becomes sealed off much like you had a door to a room in your house that you didn't want anybody to know about, so you sealed off the door. Now, that area is no longer available for circulation, therefore no longer available for clots to form, and these people can stop the blood thinners like Coumadin, but still be equally protected against a stroke. It's a valuable asset now. We've been closing the left atrial appendage for years in surgery. But what the watchman has done is provide us a minimally invasive way, much like you are having an angiogram. Everything's done through the groin. And it's about a 20-minute procedure. We generally ask you to spend one night in the hospital. You go home the next morning. But the beauty of it is we're providing you with the same protection as a blood thinner, but not exposing you to the risk of bleeding. I use this in a lot of my older patients. A lot of my patients who are at risk of bleeding, either because of an old gastrointestinal bleed, some people will tell you, uh, I've had an ulcer in my stomach, I've had bleeding in my bowels. A lot of reasons people cannot take blood thinners. And I think also a lot of these older patients that are at risk of falling, and the fall itself, 
and also hemorrhagic stroke as a result of this anticoagulation, uh, they're at risk. So this is ab absolutely a revolutionary thing, and I didn't know anything about this until you brought it up. So it's a very minimal invasive procedure. It's done through the groin, mm -hmm. and they basically put a plug right at the junction of that appendage or appendix of the heart, and basically the blood is not going to be able to get there and form blood clots. So this is a really... Is this available now? Are people like able to get this procedure done on a routine basis? Absolutely. Okay. It's uh, available all over the country. Uh, the doctors who are capable of doing it uh, are trained specially for this. Intervention cardiologists. They can be interventional cardiologists. A lot of them are electrophysiologists, so cardiologists like myself, except the ones that deal specifically with abnormal rhythms of the heart. Uh, my belief is that we are going to see more and more of this technology in the future. Nobody wants to take a blood thinner. Everybody says, oh, I know that I could bleed now. However, we absolutely value their ability to reduce the risk of having a stroke. People who have atrial fibrillation and have a stroke are much more likely to die from the stroke than other strokes, are much more likely to be severely disabled for the rest of their life. Absolutely. And, yeah. I, and I think, Adam, stroke affects the entire family. This is something that involves all the like, uh, family members and affects everybody. Just for the sake of time, and I think uh, you need to recognize the symptoms of, of stroke, which is called FAST, whether there's any facial drooping, arm weakness, you hold your arm if one of them is weaker than the other one, slurry speech, and time is of an essence because if there's any attack on the brain, just like a heart attack, you have a brain attack called a stroke, you want to get to the doctors immediately. Time is of an essence and time is brain. And so I think this is tremendous. And I think for people who have atrial fibrillation, if you need further discussion or questions, Dr. Adam Rosenblut is always available. And send your questions on drsamadi.tv.com and I will pass it on to him for any questions when it comes to high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, heart attack. I think we covered a lot of material. I wanted to thank you for bringing your knowledge, your expertise, and your personality. Uh, which is a huge part of your bedside manner, and we appreciate you being here. Well, David, I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you. You have been such an asset to generations of my practice, taking such good care of our patients. But I love the way you have distilled the essence of what we talked about today. I hope that your listeners understand that what we did today through your guidance is provide them with the tools to take better care of themselves. Absolutely. Everything that you've discussed today could impart horrific events. You described it almost as a new form of terrorism in the body, and it is. But what you distilled, what you uh, educated your viewers about today are critical opportunities to prevent these things by themselves. You need the awareness of your doctor to help you understand whether you're at risk, but once you learn this risk, please don't be afraid of it. Attack it with a voracious appetite. Take charge of it. Understand that you can be the person that defines better health for yourself. So, David, I can't thank you enough for letting me come by. It's a pleasure, and I think it's a public service. It's to empower the patient to do something and get the knowledge from here and pick the doctors around them that can take care of them. It's a pleasure to have you, Adam, and I hope we see you more often on this show. It would be my privilege. Thank you so much for all, everything that you do. We'll see you again uh, next week, which is Thanksgiving. We may take the day off, but we'll come back, but we'll keep you in tune. Don't Dr. eat too much. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and have a wonderful day. Thank you again.